Hello, geometry folks, and welcome to Volume of Prisms and Cylinders. So today we're going to talk about volume and what that means, and we are going to find um, some volumes of some specific shapes, prisms and cylinders to be exact. All right, let's get started. So first off, I want you to write this down. Volume is the number of cubic units it takes to fill up the interior of a solid. So how many cubes can I fit inside the interior of the solid? That's what that means. Okay, so it's the space inside. So if I wanted to find the volume of the shape, how many cubes could I fit in this shape? So if I took a look, if I were going to take a look at this, um, volume is length times width times height. So if we were going to split this up a little bit, we could split it up right here and we could go, this would be one cube, okay? And then how many cubes could I fit inside of this? Well, if they're all one unit cubes, and then I break it in half here, I could fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cubes. So it would be seven units cubed is how I would find the volume of this figure. Okay, so we're going to focus more today on prisms and cylinders, but the idea is how many cubes can I fit into the interior of the solid? So how much stuff can I fit inside the inside of the figure? Okay, so the formula for volume of prism is base times height. Now it isn't just the little bitty base. Big B means the area of the base. Okay, if I'm talking about area of a rectangle, I would say base, little b base times height. But if I'm talking about the volume, I want the area of the entire base. So a big B means the area of the entire base of the prism. And then the H is the height of the prism, okay? So if I have this hexagonal prism, I would have to find the area of the base, okay? And then I'd have to take it times the height of the whole prism. And whatever this would be would be the height of the whole prism. All right, let's do an example. Please write this down in your notes. We have this trapezoidal prism. We haven't done trapezoids for a long time. So we're going to find the volume of this trapezoidal prism. Now we want volume. Volume is area of the base times the height of the prism. The base here is a trapezoid. So I need the area of a trapezoid. The area of a trapezoid is one half height times base one plus base two. That would be the area of the trapezoid. This would be the height of the prism. And we take that times our height, okay? So volume is going to be one half the height of the trapezoid, not the height of the prism, okay? You've got to keep that straight. Okay, so here we go. Half uh, the height of the trapezoid would be seven. Okay, the base is nine. The first base is nine. The second base is six. Okay, so that would be the area of the trapezoid. Then we want the height of the whole prism. The height of the whole prism is four. Okay, so this is the height of the trapezoid or the base of the trapezoid, you know, within the, the base called the trapezoid. And then this is the height of the entire prism. Okay, that four is consistent all the way around. That's how I know that that's the height of the prism. So that would be times four. 
if I plug this into my calculator, I would get 210 inches cubed. Because I would take half a 7, that would be 3.5 times 15 times 4, that would be 310 inches cubed. Okay, And it's cubed inches. I didn't mean to say squared if I said squared. Sorry. It's cubed inches because it's volume. And volume is always in cubed, in the like units, whatever those units are. Okay. Let's try another one. Write this one down in your prisms for finding the length of X using the given volume. So now I want to find this X value. Okay. So what kind of prism do I have? I have a triangular prism, okay? And so volume of the triangular prism is area of the base, okay? Area of the base, and this time the area of the base is a triangle. So we would need the area of the triangle times the height of the prism, okay? So let's see if we can get this figured out. Um, let's look at the triangle part, okay? It looks like I have a right angle. I have 8 feet here and 17 feet here. So I need to find the base of this triangle. You can call it X. If you don't want to call it X, you can call it Y, not to be confused with that X. So we have 8 squared plus Y squared equals 17 squared, 64 plus y squared equals 17 squared is 289. Subtract 64 from 289, and I get y squared equals 225. Square root both sides, y equals 15. So this value is actually 15. All right. So the area of my triangle would be base of 15 times a height of 8 all over 2 times the height of the prism. This is the height of the prism. All of these rectangles would be x units tall. Therefore, x is my height of my prism. And I know that this volume is equal to 360. So I take 15 times 8 divided by 2, and I get 60x equals 360. Divide by 60, and I get x equals 6 feet. So the height of this prism would be 6 feet tall. All right, let's go on to talking about volume of a cylinder. So we have a volume of the right cylinder, okay? Guess what? It's also base, the area of the base. Big B is area of the base times height of the cylinder. Okay? But what do we know about a cylinder? We know a cylinder's base is always a circle. So the volume is really the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. Okay, area of a circle, the circle, the base, the base up here, times the height of the whole cylinder. So H is the height of the entire cylinder. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and practice this. If I were to give you this cylinder and ask you to find the volume, you would tell me that the area of the base, oops, I'm going to do it down here, the area of the base, which is a circle, is pi r squared times the height of the whole cylinder. All right, so volume is equal to pi times radius squared. Now this entire thing is 22, so the radius must be 11. So 11 squared times 16. 
If I put that in my calculator and round to the two decimal places, I would get 6,082.12 feet cubed. Okay, so that is finding the volume of a right cylinder. All right, thank you for taking good notes. And that's all, folks. We'll see you tomorrow to practice.